Hey guys, so I'm Summer Knight. I'm with Remax Whatcom County in Bellingham, Washington. I am a managing broker over here in the Pacific Northwest, and I wanted to take some time to try to put together a tutorial for you on how to take the Remax brand elements and put them in Canva Pro in a way that will make it much easier for you to access these elements in your designs, be more efficient, and be compliant. So, Bear with me, I've never done one of these before. I've got a lot of different screen shares set up. I'm gonna do my best to make this easy to follow. Um, hopefully it'll be fun and informative and you're gonna learn a lot. So I'm gonna start with where you're gonna get the brand information. So right now I am logged into my Mac Center account as you will see. And if you go to the apps and tools, you will see all of the apps. Now I have already favorited the marketing portal, so you may have to scroll to find it on your screen. But if you go to the marketing portal, it's going to open up in a new window and it's going to take you here. Now it took me a little bit to find the new digital brand. Uh, I did have to go up here to the brand link. And when I go here, what you're going to find are these two manuals. Now this one is the um, I don't know that it's the old logo, but it is the traditional logo, I will call it. And this is the new branding standards. So this is the one that you're going to want to click on and download. Um, it's a PDF and it's going to have all the info you need. When you download it, it's going to look like this. So what we want to start with in the brand standards uh, is going to be the colors just because I feel like the colors are pretty easy to work with. Now as I mentioned I am doing this with a lot of different screen shares so I have to move things around on my screen as I talk to make this make sense. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to pop into my Canva account now. So this is Canva Pro. I do believe you have to have a pro account for this to work just keep that in mind. So in Canva, I'm on my home screen and where I want to go is I want to go down to brand. And when I go to brand, you've got this option for brand kits. So go to brand kits. You will see I already have one. Yours will probably be blank. I'm going to start from scratch so I can show you how to build your own. You click on add new and you're going to name it. So I'm just going to name it Remax. Oops, we don't need a slash anymore. So I'm going to delete that. Okay. So I've started my brand kit and you will see it gives you options like logos, colors, fonts, brand voice, etc. What I want to start with is colors. Um, if you click on these on the left hand side, it just bounces you down the screen. It's just an easier way to get to what's already there. So I'm going to go to colors and what I want to do is I want to open up that PDF that had the brand colors on it because that's where I'm going to get this information from. Again, I've got several screens open at the moment that I'm working on. So to start with your colors, you want to click on add new and you want to name the color. I'm just going to go with what it says in the brand manual and I'm going to call this primary red. The first thing you want to do is where you've got this um, hashtag, we used to call that a pound sign back in my day, and that is the web color code. So in the brand manual, you want to go and find where it says web and you want to enter that code. For primary red, it is FF1200. You do not need to type the hashtag. You can just do FF1200. You see it's changed to red on the left. You also want to click on add CMYK and you'll see it's got some numbers. So a little segue here. CMYK stands for cyan, magenta, yellow, and black. Don't ask me why black is K. It is the four colors used in the physical printing process and these numbers determine the percentage of each of those ink colors to create the desired outcome. So in this instance for printing it's saying that we're going to use zero cyan, 93 magenta, 100 yellow, and zero black. However, that was auto generated by the hex code that we put in. We want to change this to what the brand manual says. And the brand manual says that we're going to use zero, 100, 100, and zero. Please note in the brand manual, it uses um, slashes between the numbers, <laughs> and this is kind of funny. Canva uses commas. I accidentally typed periods. Apparently periods work as well. So I'm going to hit enter on that, and I'm going to go add new, and I'm going to do the next color, primary blue. Primary blue's web color is 0043FF, and the CMYK on this one is 907000. Hit enter. So I'm going to go through and I'm going to add all of these. Primary dark red. The web color is 660000. And our CMYK is 
25, 100, 155. The reason the CMYK is important to add is because if you create these um, for print, you want it to use the right colors. And as you saw, when I put in the hex code um, or that web color code, it kind of just made up its own best guess as to how to match that. Uh, but Remax has specified exactly what it should be. So we just want to put in the right numbers so our print materials are exactly the right colors. All right, I am down to cream. And the web on this is F7, F5, PE. And my CMYK on cream is 2272. And then it is important to add the black because as you'll see in a minute, the hex code that they give us or the web code for black is just six zeros that is true black however for the cmyk true black is no cyan no magenta no yellow and 100 percent black they're actually creating a tone of black by doing 75 68 67 90 so you just want to make sure again that you've got black specified so that you have that right color code in there okay so now I'm back to my smiling face because I need to figure out what I am doing with all of my screen shares here. Bear with me for just a minute. Okay, so the next thing that we're going to be doing is I'm going to take you into Canva to do some fonts. Um, so let me bring back up how we're going to get those fonts. And I'm going to switch back over right here. So I have my brand manual still opened in my web browser. If you scroll down to what I believe is page four down here, it mentions fonts. Gotham, um, Bertold, Accidents, Grotesque, and Ariel are the three fonts that they would like us using in coordination with the logo. So to add them to Canva, we have to have the fonts downloaded. Um, I just do a search on Google for free font download and the font name. So Gotham, I found uh, the one that I liked the best at dfont.com. You can see there's a download button right here. Arial, I found at font.download and you've got the download right here. And then the Accidents Grotesque, you've got a download again at font download. So that's where I got my fonts from and I have downloaded them to my computer. Once you have them downloaded, we are gonna pop back over into Canva and we're gonna go to fonts. So over here on the right-hand side, you have add new and you can click on upload a font and then it's gonna let you go to your desktop. Hey, those are pictures of me. It's gonna let you go to your, full, um, your file browser and you're gonna pick your font. So I've got them on my desktop. You can see I've got accidents here. It was just one font file. I've got a folder for Arial and I've got a folder for Gotham. I'm gonna start with Gotham. When I go in there, I have lots of other folders because, surprise, fonts have lots of different iterations to make them appear in different ways. For this, we just need the regular Gotham. And really, all I'm going to need for this is I'm going to need it in bold. I'm going to want it in bold italic. Book is just the regular weight font, and I'm going to want it in regular weight italic. So I'm going to choose those four. I'm going to click Open, and I'm going to click Yes, Upload. And it's going to upload those fonts for me in just a minute. And here you can see when I click the arrow, it's got the regular, the italics, the bold, and the bold italics. I want to add the other two fonts, so I'm going to go add new. I'm going to go back to my desktop. I'm going to go into Arial. Same thing, we've got lots of options here. I really just need the regular. I want it in bold. I want it in bold italics. And I want it in regular italics. Click open, upload away. And in just a moment, it's going to pop up that screen again, and you're going to see that now I have my options for Arial. The last font we need is that Accidents font, and I'm gonna go back to my desktop, and it's right here, and I'm gonna do Upload, and now I've got Accidents on there. So the fonts have been uploaded. Now what you'll notice is I've got fonts, and I've got all of this, and I don't see them here. They're down here under Manage Uploaded Fonts, right? So this is where you can verify that they're there. What you can then do is you can go in here and you can set defaults for when you're creating files. So if I always want the body of anything that I am creating to let's say be in, uh, let's go with Arial, regular, my body font is going to default to 16 in Arial. Of course, you can always change this as you're styling things, but we're just gonna set some defaults. Let's say that I want any section header that I create in my document. Whoops, I didn't mean to do that. I wanted to do 
Gotham bold, I'm gonna leave it at 20. Great, my section headers are Gotham bold. Say I want my subheadings to be accidents, select it there. So as you can see, you can go through and you can dictate how you want things to appear as you're creating them. Now I am gonna show you just a little bit later. You don't have to set these up. You'll still be able to access those fonts once that you have uploaded them. Um, I just really wanted to show you how to get them in there. So then the next part that we're gonna do is going to be logos. Um, so I'm gonna go back to my smiling face for a second so that I can show you where you're gonna get those logos. Back into my web browser. So we've downloaded our files. I'm gonna go ahead and close those windows. Where am I? Okay, so now we need to get the logos. We are gonna go back in here to Mac Center. Again, we are in that marketing section and we're gonna click on use it, logos. Right here, first and foremost, we've got the new Remax branding assets and logos. And so you can click on download. It's gonna download a file to your desktop. Now, once you have that file downloaded, it's a zip file. And so you're going to um, just click on that and it should decompress it for you. And then you're gonna have access to it to upload here. So you can drag and drop from your desktop or you can click on add new and I'm gonna go upload logos. So somewhere here, I have new branding logo files. This is that file I downloaded. So I've opened it up. It's got lots of things in it. Right now, we're gonna start with these four. We've got the cream logo with the balloon, the black logo, no balloon, black logo with balloon, and cream logo, no balloon. Open. And it's gonna import these into your brand. The other thing that I think that you should put in here is the balloon itself. So I'm gonna go back into add new and I'm gonna show you where to find it in that folder. If you go into logo design files and you can go down here to the digital only one, you've got a balloon mark folder. You go in there, I would choose the one that says PNG because that's gonna have a transparent background. You're gonna go ahead and click that and now you've got the balloon. Now that said, you can certainly go in and you can also upload all of the other logos that are used for print materials. Please go ahead and do that. I'm not gonna do the entire walkthrough, but I've shown you in Mac Center where to find logos. You can get those other ones. You can put whatever you want, 100% club, any logos you want, team logo, you can put them all in there as part of your brand setup. So just to recap, what I've shown you so far is where to find the new digital guides, with all of the color codes. Hey, thumbs up. <laughs> How to put those color codes into a brand kit in Canva Pro. And then I've also shown you how you can go in and you can download the logos and how you can put the logos in your brand kit in Canva. So now what I'm gonna try and do here is I'm gonna pop back over to my Canva and I'm just gonna show you how this works and how you access it. So let's say we're working on a design um, and I am just gonna go with a magazine cover because why not? Okay, so this is blank. Um, let's have a little bit of fun and I have not practiced this in advance. So I'm just gonna pick a magazine color cover. I'm gonna go with this nature one. Okay, so once you have something on the screen that you're working with, what you can do is you can click on brand and this is gonna bring up your brand. Now this is um, a different brand that I've created previously. I'm just switching into the one I created during this tutorial. So my brand is open. Here are the logos that I've updated. Here are my color palettes. Here are the fonts, um, those uh, section headers and body and things that I've uploaded. Now there were other things that we've skipped over. You could go back now that you have a little bit of an idea of how this brand kit works. You could go in and add other things like information about the voice of your brand. You could add icons, graphics, and photos. However, for this example, so I've uploaded this. One thing you can do that's kind of fun is you can click on the color palette and it will use your colors and anything that is in color, it will go ahead and give you different options of how to use your brand colors in this design. I don't like any of that, but that's irrelevant. Other things you can do. You can go in here now and you can click on the font and you can go in and you will have your little Remax here and here's all your Remax fonts. So you can make this compliant. You can also go down and now change every instance of that font I clicked on to the brand font. Other things you can do, I'm gonna delete this. You can go in, you've got your brand here. You can see all of your logos. You can click a logo and you can immediately insert it. So basically, 
the brand um, kit in Canva is just a great way to have all of those things. Oh, I forgot to show you the best part, which is the colors. I showed you the shuffle, but not how to use them otherwise. Hold on, let's go back to Canva. So if I go back into my brand kit, this is literally the best part. Um, so I can go in here and I wanna change this and I want it to be red, but I want it to be compliant red. So when I click on the color chooser right here, I've got my brand and here's my brand color palette. These are the ones that I entered right from the brand manual. So if I click on this, I know that it is the exact right Remax red. I can also go in and change every instance of black to that Remax red if I so desire. I can go in here, I can make it the exact right primary dark blue. I can make this the exact right black. Isn't that amazing? I love it. I can go back into my logos. I can throw that balloon in here if I so desire. Ta-da! Okay, well, that's not pretty and it's not meant to be pretty. It is just meant to show you how it works. So, to recap, I have shown you in approximately 15 to 16 minutes how you can go into Mac Center. You can download the brand guide, how you can go find those free fonts, those three fonts, and download them, how you can download the logos, how you can compile all of this into Canva Pro, create a brand kit, and it's something that you can access easily in every design so that you are compliant with your logos, you are compliant with your colors, and you are compliant with your fonts. It will make your designing that much more efficient. I hope that this was beneficial to you. I hope that you learned something. Thanks for playing along. This was really fun for me to try to create and learn how to pop through the different screens and show you how I do things. If you like this, give me a thumbs up, give me a comment. If you have questions, my email is summernight, S-O-M-M-E-R-N-Y-T-E at remax.net. I'd be happy to try and help you. I can't do super in-depth tutorials with you, but if you have a quick question or you're struggling with something, let me know. I'll see what I can do to help you out. If there's something else you want to learn, let me know. I love teaching. It'd be super fun to put together some more videos in the future. That's all I got. Thanks for watching. Make it a great day.